Who said it? Who said it's not too bad in here? <laughs> you, can, you can have a free CD just for that. What you looking for? I know the drill. <laughs> this is what we get out of it. We've been having, since Alex was a baby and Reed was a baby, we've been having him come up and start the show. So I would hold him in my arms. And, and uh, they were just... <laughs> <laughs> it's all part of the show. <laughs> oh, no. That's right. It, it's the, the clapper died some years ago. Yeah, just clap arms like this. And I'm waiting for one of them that had to have a costume change real quick. And we're going to get them up here. And Mark, you're going to help because we're going to keep them off of all this. We're going to get like more like in front. And what we get out of this, after 12 years, is a, is a video montage of the grandchildren getting bigger. And the oldest one is 14, and she was in my arms the first time we did it. So I don't know, what does that get you? I'm hoping George Soros will see this and take, take yeah, don't you think he would take mercy on us? Is that a straight? Is that a hip, is that a, not obtuse? That's too obvious. Too obvious. That leads me, y'all know I'm wandering, my mind wanders. They're here, oh good, thank God. Remember when the uh, the invading horde was dry, walking up from Guatemala? Yeah. George Soros had paid every one of them $3,000 to, to walk 3,000 miles in sandals with their children. Yeah, hell, that's right. If only. And I, and I've, I've tried to cure myself. Facebook is the devil's domain. <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> Gary knows. And the news feed is where the devil hangs out at night. The news feed. These people posted, it was people I knew, it's always someone you know. You know, at the festival, when you hear these kids screaming and they're screwing up the recording, so always my grandchildren. And, uh, sorry guys, it's all right, I, I'm trying not to. So I went on the devil's domain in the news feed and responded to an email that said, who's with me? I'm rounding up a posse and we're gonna go down to the border and we're gonna pick them off as they try to come across. And like an asshole, I responded. I said, 
I'm personally opposed to shooting children. That's all I say. You'd think that I had disavowed everything pure and good that anybody ever stood for. A guy literally said, you know, man, if you don't get them when they're young, they'll get you when they're old. And I thought, who are them? Who are them? And then one more. I'm not going to be political. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is this thing on? Are we broadcasting? Good. Pay attention. Pay attention to me. I'm telling you. We got to change our hearts a little. Before it's too late, it's going to cost us. I want to. I want to get my little grandchildren up here to do the clapper. Help them, Mark. Is Reed back? Stand in front here. Stand in front. if you start playing and something down in Jordan Lane is different. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> I say go with it. I say go with it, too. I have to introduce this a certain way. The idea of a veteran's benefit is kind of something that's worked for us for a couple of years now. I don't know. Ray Wiley said once to us, he said, trouble with irony is not everybody gets it. And uh, you don't have to get that. And... Uh, the honor guard from Livingston was here this morning and gave us an award from the state of Tennessee, which we were both proud and confused to receive. And, uh, but maybe people are coming together. I don't know. Wouldn't that be nice? See, it's always my grandchildren. It's always, Alex, are you going to watch them? Or are they, what? Are you in charge of them? Oh, their father's got them. I want... I want to dedicate this weekend and this, this show and these songs to my friend Danny Smith, who lived two miles down the road here to the north of us, and he died Monday. And I've known Danny since we moved on the river in 76, and I knew him all but the last two years. I never knew that he was a Vietnam veteran and that he served three tours of duty as a, as a gunboat captain. captain. On the, on the Mekong Delta in Vietnam. And uh, when I asked him, I, one day I said, uh, would you do it again? He said, hell no, I wouldn't do it again. And uh, that meant something to me. Somebody needs to write that song. Are you going to control your children? You're not, are you? It's not part of the... She is the youngest. Y'all, come on in. We'll make room for you. Find a, come on in and get a seat. There's some seats up front here. There's some seats. Uh, are are y'all staying? Are you going out or are you staying? You're staying, right? <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> That's why we get the big money. Uh, you get paid? I do not get paid. Actually, I don't get paid. But there's all kinds of big money. Here comes some people that need to sit down. Where's Patty Ernst? Did she get here? Is Patty here? Oh, she was going to rent the house. Ja She's here? Is ja Patty's here, James? All right. Y'all ready? Got a buddy named Brian Brinkerhoff. Lives in California. He came right here and recorded a album with Malcolm Holcomb that, that uh, Daryl Scott produced right here in the sanctuary. I spent four days watching that. It was pretty like watching Einstein at work. And then you get to hang around with Malcolm, which is a whole other universe. And uh, 
Malcolm calls me three times a week now, so the world problems are almost over. It's right in front of us. And he's, he inquired, would I mind, that he had just recorded Nathan, and uh, w could we fit him into a show? And, and Brian's uh, a good supporter and has, been, has helped us and sponsored us. And, you know, so I told him, well, I don't know. I'll have to see a song. <laughs> And I only took one half of one song, and I was good. And I called Nathan, and he agreed to come. I can't remember what we agreed to pay you, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> standard union, right? Standard union, so you get what I get. Yep. There's seats up here. Come on up. Come on. Come on. Bring a double or two. That's right. That's right. Double pushes no phone cameras. <laughs> one more. I'm going to say it. We're going to count it off. Coming all the way from Signal Mountain, which isn't that far. Nathan Bell, give it up for Nathan Bell. said before if worse comes to worse we'll pull that microphone there over here and we'll continue on and then all the world will be well I discovered a secret to the heat if you go sit in a porta potty for about seven minutes it feels great out here just in case. So. All right, so that means nobody can hear me anyway. I got a bunch of acapella stuff I do, um, but all of it sucks. Um, oh, this kit, you're not worried about this kit, are you? Let's see. Let me see if we got anything now. Signal. I'm getting signal here. Keep it muted for half a second. Okay. Let me try it. We'll try about the speaker. Got it? I, I know exactly what happened, but if I say what happened, I'll get in trouble. I'll get in tr no, it's not on you. I'll get in trouble if I say anything. So, no, the grandchildren are fine. I never blame anything on children. They're the hope of the world. So I, I know about Hippie Jack. I've known about Hippie Jack for a long time. What I didn't understand was exactly how cool this all was because I, I thought it was just a show. I didn't know there was all this other stuff along with it. And uh, there's actually a strategy in mind. You'll feel sorry for me soon, and then I'll be able to do absolutely anything I want, <laughs> up to and including my uh, Michael Bolton medley. Uh, <laughs> But uh, no, I was I did a record with Brinkerhoff and he was talking about working with Malcolm and every time he talked about it, he'd shake his head a little bit. And uh, in a good way, like uh, I, wor I was working with Malcolm and then he'd uh, shake his head a little and talk about how great it was. And uh, I'd heard that too. So I didn't really expect to be invited because I'm uh, clearly incompetent. Man, I've been, you know, I've been doing this for, I took a bunch of years off, but I've been doing this for a long time, and the only thing that confounds me is the geometrics of getting this damn thing turned on. And uh, so you're going to be real surprised when I can actually play this guitar. Uh, we got money. See what I tell you? If I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have any applause yet.
afraid to touch somebody that you love too much. I, baby, can you burn with me now? Your eyes ever filled up with tears, one for every passing year, my Baby, do you love me now? It doesn't matter what we say, only ever matters what we do. I won't need much along the way, darling, all I'll ever ask of you. Someday, baby, would you carry me down? Thank you. Tennessee Hills If they hadn't moved me to Jackson I'd be hitting a way still It's 25 years gone It's 35 years gone And all that time gone Is just gone Goodbye, brushing mountain. Goodbye, brushing mountain. Goodbye, brushing mountain. this song for a soundtrack 
and they used a different song of mine that had absolutely nothing to do with the soundtrack. But I liked it enough, and then I decided to go ahead and do it as the soundtrack when I play it live. <laughs> and uh, by the way, they just turned Brushy Mountain into a combination whiskey distillery and fun park. Thank you very much. The album that I was recording that uh, got uh, Hippie's attention is an album actually recorded 22 songs in three days, much like the old days, you know, and uh, live with a drummer named Alvino Bennett. If you look up Alvino Bennett, he plays with uh, Stevie Wonder and Dave Mason and played with Minnie Riperton and Gladys Knight. So it's just me and him, and we did a bunch of stuff. And this song, um, I love the blues. I grew up with them. But I never could do them the way that, like, guys who tribute the blues do it. I never quite sounded right. I couldn't quite copy it. And I played a lot of, a lot of blues. Uh, I played all the old guys, but they always came out sounding a little weird when I did it. And uh, I started doing it when I was 15, and I started playing at a place called The Sanctuary in Iowa City, Iowa. I know. I didn't plan that. It just worked out today. And uh, I used to play there every night playing these old gut bucket blues with this 15-year-old boy with a guitar, Double O Gibson. And uh, this guy named Harry Oster, who was one of the great uh, musicologists of, in this world, he, he taught at the University of Iowa. He was about this tall. And he, uh, he came up to me one night and he said, uh, I see you play uh, all that old Delta stuff and all those uh, the blues out of Mississippi and Louisiana, and I said, yeah, and he said, how long you been doing that? And I said, all my life. <laughs> but I always thought of the blues as kind of a everywhere music. They got it in Greece, they got it in Italy, they got it everywhere, their own form. And I always think of it as the way you get better, it's the way you get right, not the way you get wrong, if that makes any sense. They say the blues can be a river where sorrow goes to drown or a single cigarette when there's no one else around. But when your heart is weary, the only thing you need is the blues to keep you rolling. The blues to keep you rolling. Sing on Sunday morning, prayer up to the Lord to bring down all the blessings that your money can't afford but man's only salvation from birth to tragedy is the blues that keep you rolling the blues that keep you rolling let's roll I've got a river to cross 
mountain to climb. I'm as scared of living as I am of dying. But the stones in my pathway, they don't hinder me. I got the blues that keep you rolling. Got the blues that keep you rolling. I got the blues that keep you rolling. Thank you. So I came to Nashville in 1991 with kind of a record deal and a real publishing deal. Back in the days when that meant you could make upwards of $10,000 a year. And it uh, didn't take me long to see I didn't fit in, but my publisher in an attempt to make things work out took me to see an image consultant. Now it's kind of like I am now, contrary not that pleasant to look at. They took me in, and this guy looked a little bit like uh, Andy Reid, the coach of the Philadelphia Eagles for a while there. Big fella, and he was wearing coach's shorts and a polo shirt with the breakfast on the shoulder. And he said to me, you know, you might want to consider uh, doing something like Dwight Yoakam does. And he got up from the desk and he did this. And I said, no, nah, man, I don't think that works for me. And my publisher was kind and she was looking at me like, don't, don't react poorly. And he said, well, you know, it's maybe you could dance a little and damned if you didn't get up again. And it was like a frat party, you know. And uh, so we knew it wasn't getting anywhere. And he said, finally, you know, I've seen you play. And I said, well, that's good. He said, but it doesn't appear that you like the audience very much. And it was true at the time. I played as many songs as I could, as fast as I could, got them over with and jumped off stage. Kind of an acoustic punk guy. Didn't want to be, didn't want to acknowledge the audience at all. And he said, after every song, you step back like this. And I said, okay. And my publisher hauled me out of there and said, oh, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. I, felt, I quit the business for about 15 years, and I was back in the business, and they, sent, they called me up over in the Netherlands, had me come do a show, and I did a show, and I did a real fast song, and at the end of the fast song, it went like this. The place went nuts. I'm just, I don't know where that's going from here. Actually, this is one of the songs that came with me in 91. Oh, please, mister, please gotta buy this song it's all that i have it's all that i own pay me what a heart full of love should bring so i can buy my darling a gold wedding ring i remember the day when we made our vows i said i'm too poor to buy you a ring right now we swore our love on the rows of sharing and I went back to work in the clothes I was wearing well somehow the promise just slipped away till it was something I thought and forgot to say my baby cries lonesome as I whistle in the pines and it breaks my heart near every time so please mister please gotta buy this song it's all that i have it's all that i own pay me what a heart full of love should bring so i can buy my darling a gold wedding ring Mister, you can't see. I'm no left of your hand. And I ain't got a wallet. And I don't need a bank. But I need my baby. And I know for sure I ain't going home without a ring for her. So please, mister, please. You gotta buy this song. 
It's all that I have. It's all that I own. Pay me what a heart full of love should bring. So I can buy my darling a gold wet ring. It's too good. Gotta buy this song. It's all that I have. It's all that I own. Pay me what a heart full of love should bring. So I can buy my darling a gold wet ring. Thank you. You can always find me here. Reflected in the glass, and I won't be the first to go, but I just might be the last. You can see the end in me. etched by wind. Take another drink and listen as everything turns to rust. You can build whatever you want to build. Time will make it bankrupt. You can love someone with all your will. Still lose them in the end. When you're young, you're full of brave words. Chemicals and love. Till one day you just stop talking and you can hear everything turn to rust. I've been trying to hold the water back Trying to stay afloat Trying like hell to save this house But it's the only thing I know I might climb up on a roof Wave the white flag and give up. And close my eyes and listen as everything turns to rust. Thank you.
My hero was Lightning Hopkins, which is no surprise. I think it was everybody. Later on, it was a Brownie McGee was my hero when I figured out he was really doing it. But I started on Lightning like a lot of people. I learned you could do a whole set with one chord. And then the occasional four. I got to see Lightning. When I was a kid at a place called Gaven Walkers. It's a long place. It used to be an old railroad building. So it went on and on and on. It's a bar at the back. And all these uh, young college kids were there watching lightning, me and my dad. And lightning was doing one of those 45 minute songs he does where he just talks about whatever's around him. Old lightning like it here. Oh, yeah, he does. And at one point he looked out over the crowd and he saw this fellow sitting back at the bar and he said, I'm going to cut that man. Well, there was a perfectly nice looking fellow sitting back at the bar and he looked, well, me? Lightning stop? I'm going to cut that man. The crowd started to get a little nervous. <laughs> that joke's for the guitar player. Lightning looked back again and said, I'm going to cut that man. That guy got up and got the hell out of the bar. Lightning went a little further, and then he went, I was going to cut that man. Sam Hopkins come to Houston in a retread Cadillac. Said, I did my time in the prison farm, and I'm never going back. Walked all over Dowling Street with his guitar and his gun. Said one is good for business, the other's just for fun. You got to get down, get back up again. You got to get down, get back up again. Well, everywhere he went, in his alligator boots. Black man did the time, and the white man stole the blues. He changed his name to Lightning, traveled all across the land, and he never played a note without the money in his hand. You got to get down, get back up again. You got to get down, get back up again. You got to get down, get back up again. You got to get down. Last time I saw lightning, it was 1975. Had a woman on each arm and a bone handle knife. Well, liquor in the bottle. Johnny Walker out the back. So a man can look real good in a retread Cadillac. You got to get down. Get back up again. You got to get down. Get back up again. You got to get down. Get back up again. You got to get down, you got to get down, you got to get down, get back up again.
Thank you. Back when I was still touring in the U.S., which has kind of cut that back because it's a, it's a no money game in here anymore. So um, back when I was still doing it, I was driving through Ohio a lot, and I used to see all these highway overpasses named after uh, service members. And I thought to myself, you know, I bet those people would rather have the kid than the highway overpass. John David McCutcheon Come from the Wyoming plain I am the third of five strong boys But I'm just a name I played safety on my high school football team even won a couple of games. They stand silent at halftime now. And I'm just a name. Sergeant Albert J. Jefferson Come from Seattle In the rain I am the only son of Ann and Jerry And I'm just a name Quit my job as a house painter when the hard times came and Now the hard times don't bother me no more And I'm just a name I'm just a name To you To you I'm just a name to you, to you. You don't know the things I did and will never do, for I'm just a name. Specialist Maria Selena Lopez come from Santa Fe. I am the first of my sisters to go to college, but I'm just a name. I did exactly what I was told. Things went badly, just the same. I am a candle in my mother's hand. And I am just a name. I am just a name to you.
Thank you. I have merch, but I have a deal on the merch, a very special deal on the merch. I have vinyl out. You can't get free vinyl. You have to pay for the vinyl. Stuff's too weird not to make people pay for it. You know, when they killed vinyl, I was the happiest man alive. No more test pressing. No more warp stuff. No more needles. But they decided they had to make an old man unhappy, and they brought it back. It sounds kind of cool, though. It's a yellow special edition vinyl with a Lamar Sorrento painting of me that makes me look 20 years younger. So, all right. And, uh... I know I have the right audience for that particular comment because y'all are sharing my uh, particular need to make it somehow to a working social security system. <laughs> I have merch. I have it in this box. It's holding up the fan. So I'm going to have to replace that fan when Grayson comes up because it would be unfair to drop the fan down. Well, wait, he's sitting, isn't he? You sit down, right? Excellent. The fan will move to your level and I'll take my merch. Awesome. Things don't work out like this very often. It must be a sign. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have merch. So what I'm going to do is if you, um, if you donate whatever you would have given me for the merch, you can have one of my CDs. And I don't care what it is. So if you only got a buck, a buck's a buck, man. It goes somewhere. You know, <clears throat> dollar gets you something. Package of licorice, right? Vinyl is groovy. It's also uh, skip a vinyl guy. There's always a vinyl guy in the room. There's also always guitar guys in the room. They always come up and ask me about this guitar. I really like it. I couldn't tell you a damn thing about it other than that. I don't know what he made it out of. Uh, I know it's a 12 fret double O model by a man named Matt Shamala in uh, Fairhaven, Massachusetts. It's fun to play and it sounds real good. And it's a little crackly, and I think that's Bluetooth. Anybody got a Bluetooth phone in the front row? <laughs> it's, it's, the, uh, it's the wireless. Isn't that weird? I have a cable. If you guys are hearing a lot of it, I can swap out. Right? Are you? No. You guys are kind of, uh, what's the word? Uh, stoic. This is about, uh, this is about mountaintop mining, uh, mountaintop mining removal crap like that, and you know, I really thought there were a few things I thought had gone the way of the dodo, and that's kind of an ironic way to put it, right? Um, but uh, I never thought that we'd put such a stack of assholes back up in power. So this one's a... Uh, did I say that out loud? I thought I was thinking it. All right, good. <laughs> Well, they blew up Coal River Mound and everything inside. Went rushing to the bottom like children down a slide. And everyone got paid right before they died. When they blew up Coal River Mound, they blew the top off a lost mountain and the air was filled with wings. The sky was black and gray and not the bright colors of spring. And the devil sang a song that only the devil sang. When they blew the top off a lost mountain. And this world isn't fit for beast or human. But we live like men and we work like women. We hope for better for our sons and our daughters who are born just to drown in coal black water. Well, 
Well, they blew up Grandfather Mountain. I saw it in a dream. Rocks and trees all tumble down into the stream. And everything that washed away, well, it still belonged to me. When they blew up Grandfather Mountain, and this world isn't fit for beast or human, but we live like men and we work like women. And we hope for better for our sons and our daughters who are born just to drown in cold black water. This world isn't fit for beast or human. We live like men and we work like women. And we hope for better for our sons and our daughters who are born just to drown in coal black water. I'm a man, baby, baby, I'm a man. Roll up my sleeves and I do the best I can, but I'm drowning in a river of bad paper coming due. I got the North Georgia waters rising, ain't no way to save your money blue. Well, well, the governor's in a big house somewhere up the line. Family is so perfect, they don't look a thing like mine. And the president don't come round here, he just reads about us in the news. And those North Georgia waters rising, ain't no way to save no money blue. Well, you can pray to Jesus, hope that he comes through, but you know you're never gonna lose. Those North Georgia waters rising, ain't no way to save your money blue. I'm a seven son, baby. Think it's about time that I roll and I ramble somewhere else down the line. I can tell you I got trouble, but you got trouble too. And those North Georgia waters rising ain't no way to save your money blue. Well, you can pray to Jesus, hope that he comes through, but you know you're never gonna lose. Those North Georgia waters rising ain't no way to save your money blue. No Georgia waters rising, ain't no way to save your money blue. Thank you. I think it's getting close to closing my portion of this show out, don't you think? How are we doing? I'm guessing. So we'll do one more here and then send you off to beer town. And then we then we will uh, we will uh, I will pull my stuff out of the way. Grayson will come up here. We'll readjust the fan. For those of you who really wanted a blow by blow. It's a dilemma what to do for the last song when there's beer waiting. <laughs> so the thing is, I started out listening to Hendrix. That's all I ever wanted to be was Jimi Hendrix. I mean, the live Jimi Hendrix. Then I got into Train and Sun Rock, Miles. I screwed up my blues playing. I 
That's for all the deadheads. What I really love was Brandon McGee because uh, he had this way of playing rhythm without ever really playing in rhythm. He just kind of flowed along. She said, I don't know you like I used to know you. Something's changing these days. She said, you know, I liked you better the old way. And I said, babe, I'm just fading. Watch me fade in a way. I get it right or wrong sooner or later. We all get gone. She said that river, it's a mighty wide river. It goes on for miles and miles. For all you know, darling, you won't be crossing it for a while. And I said, baby, I'm just traveling. Watch me travel. Away, but get it right or wrong, sooner or later, we all get gone. We all get gone. Hallelujah. We all get gone. Amen. Sooner or later, right or wrong. Y'all get gone. And that's a baby. Watch me traveling away, but get it right or wrong, sooner or later, we all get gone, right or wrong, sooner or later, we all get gone. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to get him to play one more. You know, we like one more here. Yeah. Um, the first song that Brian sent me a link to was Leaving Broshy Mountain. Is that the right name? Goodbye, Broshy Mountain. Mountain. And I. I get it. That's been a song for a long time for, I think, for Nathan. And that's, you know, and it's good. There's a reason. But I sent him a video about a friend I had that I didn't know very long named Josie Cooper. And he went to Brushy when he was, hey, Patty, when he uh, was 18, he went to Brushy Mountain. And they broke him. They ruined him. Brushy was known to ruin people. And he got out in his early 20s, and uh, he just didn't have any, any direction or any life. He wandered here and yonder, as they say, on the mountain. And he'd stay with Cotton one night, and they would leave Roy the next night, maybe with Teddy one night. And I, I don't think he did a whole lot of dope. I didn't ever see him drink a beer. But he was lost. He was lost. And I did a video of him. His brother was in the penitentiary in Nashville. 
and he was dying of stomach cancer. And I did a video of them talking about how the treatment was for that and how he was how he was treated and how they never really even made an effort to let him come home in his last few days and see his family and see his children. And a week before, as his brother lay dying, as Kenny lay dying in the hospital in Nashville, Jesse stepped in front of a train in Monterey, Tennessee, and uh, ended his own pain. And I, I think the story of that is that if you're going to punish somebody by putting them in hell, you better have a damn good job for them waiting when they get out because you ruin people. You ruin people for nothing just because we want to punish people. We have more people in prison in this country than any other country in the history of the world, and, and we're building more prisons every day. So I was moved by that song, and uh, I just wanted to hear him do the rest of his songs. So let's see if we can get him to do one more. Nathan Bell. I made a comment earlier about Brushy. You do know it really is a, like turned into a party palace whiskey place. I don't know about the karma on that one. I can't imagine that. I just, I, I can't imagine it. I really can't. This is off the, the latest record. Uh, it's an EP that's come out from the sessions we did called The Right Reverend Crow Sings New American Folk and Blues. And the Right Reverend Crow is a guy I invented. He's kind of me, but he's not. He's an atheist tent preacher. All right? Everybody's welcome. No expectation. Stick around if you want to. Don't give me your money. Well, Shelly was a large animal that weighed at least 400 pounds. Dale was a skinhead patent attorney, quit to be a rodeo clown. Got run over by a bull called Twister, and the doctors were shocked to find he'd been a woman all along. Shelly didn't seem to mind. And it wasn't the life they expected to live Wasn't the end of the means They were just living out on the edge Of the big old American dream Randall was the first in his family Get him a piece of ground. Dragged a Clayton trailer to the middle of nowhere, jacked up to settle down. But the bank had strings on the money, and when everything went to hell, they said you couldn't afford it anyway, boy, so it's probably just as well. And it wasn't the life he expected to live, wasn't the end of the me. He was just hanging on to the edge of the big old American dream. Everybody said Jeb the poorly. But he never would tell him why. And he left the bullets out of the gun because nobody needed to die. He was saying he was sorry when he took the money he needed for medicine. And he turned around, took the money right back, said, I'll never do that again. 
And it wasn't the life he expected to live it Wasn't the end of the me He was just slipping off of the edge Of the big old American dream Ryan's heart spoke clearly. He put down his gun and said no. And they locked him away in Leavenworth prison. They were never gonna let him go. He said, you can't cage a free soul. You can't trap the wind. But he wondered when they put him down in the hole if he'd ever be home again. And it wasn't the life he expected to live Wasn't the end of the me He was just staring out at the edge Of the big old American dream And it wasn't the life they expected to live Wasn't the end of the me They were all living out on the edge Of the big old American dream. Thank you. Thank you. We're pretty close. You're a listening audience. That's why we like you. We're going to regather, gather our stuff. Silas, would you hand me that beer that's up there? Oh. It's always your grandchildren. <laughs> we'll get started back again. Um, I want to talk about, yeah, hand me that beer up there. Nobody step there. I want to talk about my buddy Manny. Yeah. Jighead beer is a craft beer business. What do you call them? Is it a business? Brewery. How did Leonard know that? And, and uh, they became one of our festival sponsors last year, and we sell Jighead beer there. We're going to talk about it more. He's having an event coming up, and I was if he was here, he'd tell me when. But I wanted to get this out. And uh, we really enjoy the Jighead beer. We enjoy the, their support of what we do, our outreach and our efforts. and. Uh, they're excellent people, so they're, and uh, I would be remiss, and this is to everybody out there in TV streamland, to uh, promote the Barnegie, the Barnegie Hall concert with uh, yeah. Berlin Thompson and, Berlin Thompson and, and Sean Kemp, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's taking place Tuesday in Cokeville, October 1st. I wish I could read the uh, contact stuff. Can you read what it says? So many contact stuff. Oh, look at that. Who is? Did you go to high school? No, hold this up right there. Okay. No, I still can't read it. No, hold it right there. I got you. Oh. Now I'm out of curious. <laughs> there is no distance to learn. www.wcte.org. And uh, you can get your tickets. It's a dinner show. And if you've never seen Berlin, Berlin's played out here. Berlin uh, was here with uh, with Daryl Scott producing one of Malcolm's last CDs. I spent four days with Berlin Thompson and Jared Tyler and Malcolm Holcomb and Daryl Scott hanging out here eating cookies. But this will be an excellent night of music. 
for an excellent cause. And uh, I would look into it, www.wcte.org, and we'll get the, get the uh, people that need the funding for PBS, keep that stuff rolling. Sorry about my little grandchildren, but too bad for you. If you don't like it, keep it to yourself. <laughs> That's funny. We're going to take a little break and then get you a beer, and we'll get Grayson up here. It's not too hot, is it, Patty? Is it hotter than this in Chicago? Oh, that's right. It's winter. What is that? How much does that suck? Horrible. Is the wind blowing? Not yet. We'd rather have you here. Yeah, okay. Thank you for coming. I thought John retired, didn't he? Uh, uh, it'll be all right. All right, give us a few. We'll shut down and restart. I think you're going to drop and use the second card. So stop recording, and then I'll come around, and we'll push the button, and I'll clap. I don't know. Am I going to clap? When's your show, Manny? Let's get it out to TV land. At the brewery. October 4th and 5th? Free admission. Music? Yeah. Oh, really? All right. Mm -hmm. Jig Head Oktoberfest. And uh, will there be beer? <laughs> there will be beer. So... Check that out out there. You're already on the computer watching this. You might as well go ahead and check it out now. Is that the clapper? Is it broken? Who's? I don't know if I can do it. Here, let me drink beer on camera. Who's got me? I got me. We got me. Got me, Luden? Everybody got me? Stop recording. I'll come around. We'll change to the other cards. We'll gather the people back up. We'll drink beer. Lynn, i got to talk to you. And uh, we'll get Grayson up here. We'll tell stories on Grayson. We've known Grayson long enough to know stories. <laughs> yeah, we do. Well, we're going to relive them. We're going to relive them for you. You know, that was the problem. <laughs> there is no doubt. It was the moonshine.
Like a breath of spring, your voice is soft like summer rain, and I cannot compete with you, Jolene. He talks about you in his sleep. There's nothing I can do to keep from crying when he calls your name, Jolene. And I can easily understand how you could easily take my man, but you don't know what he means to me, Jolene. Jolene, 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 Jolene I'm begging of you, please don't take my man Jolene, 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 Jolene Oh, please don't take him just because you can Can you give him more vocal in the monitor? You could have your choice of men, but I could never love again. He's the only one for me, Jolene. I'm glad I had this talk with you. My happiness depends on you and whatever you decide to do, Jolene. Can you put like a little like mid-range in there, maybe upper mid-range, just a slight bit? No, in the vocal? Jolene, 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 Jolene I'm begging of you, please don't take my man Jolene, 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 Jolene Oh, please don't take him just because you can If I could maybe a, a little, uh, mm, thank you. It's always good to sing from a woman's perspective. <laughs> yeah, we. I think that's good. Let's see. Uh, I feel like the drink's always going to have me on the hook. It does have low, low things going on. Maybe like a little. Uh, I think I'll be fine. Could you add like I don't know if you got any reverb to yeah, make absolutely. it sound uh, bourbon? Yeah, not too, not too much, but you know, just a little bit. Yeah, cool. You can put a tad more if you want to. Just yeah, just a little bit. Verb is good. <laughs> Day while the blossoms still cling to the vine, I taste your strawberries, I drink your sweet wine. A million tomorrows will all pass away, ere I forget all the joys that are mine today. I can't live on promises, winter to spring, and I can't live on memories of yesterday's dreams. But now is my moment, and now is my glory.
still doing sound check. Anybody ever? about compression, but, you know, if you like ZZ Top, you better not. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about taste. <laughs> Too much. Compress it and then put it on the radio and compress yeah. it some more. Yeah. I'm gonna sweat anyway, so <laughs> it might just make things wobble a little bit. Let's start testing things out. Okay. Huh? Yeah. I spent all summer in Colorado. L.A. is Lower Alabama, by the way. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> going to L.A. in August was a great plan after the whole summer in Colorado. Woo! 95 at night. <laughs> On a cool night. On a cool night with mosquitoes. <laughs> Summertime. South, you talk real slow, stuff like that, especially in Louisiana, you know, Tony Joe White and stuff like that. And then you get up north and you start getting a little cold and you start talking like you know, in, in your nose up here. It's like, yeah. you know, you start talking fast and your lips don't move very much, you know. So it's because you're cold, but down south, you got to conserve energy. And up north, you got to expand, expand, expand yeah. energy. <laughs> I can entertain while they're out. Uh, there. <laughs> cool, I'll be glad to. <laughs>
waiting for the introduction. <laughs> While I'm waiting on Jack, I'll sing a song for Jack. The sign said long hair freaky people need not apply. So I tucked my hair up under my hat. I went in to ask him why. Says, you like a fine upstanding young man. I think you'll do. But I took off my hat. I said, imagine that. Me working for you. Oh, sign, sign, everywhere sign Blocking out the scenery, breaking my mind Do this, don't do that, can't you read the sign? Sign says anybody caught trespassing I'll be shot on sight So I stood on the fence, I yelled at the house I said, hey, hippie, what gives you the right? Build a fence to keep me out while you keep Mother Nature in. Now, if God were here, he'd tell you to your face, man, you some kind of sinner. Whoa, sign, sign, everywhere sign, blocking out the scenery, breaking my mind. Do this, don't do that, can't you read the sign? The hippie's gonna introduce me, but I gotta introduce him first. Hey, mister, can't you read? You gotta have a shirt and tie to get a seat. You can't watch, you can't eat. You ain't supposed to be, be, be here. Sign says you gotta have a membership card to get inside. How? Welcome, come in, kneel down and pray. And we passed around the plate at the end of it all. I didn't have a pen to cut on. So I took out a pen and paper. I made my own little sign. I said, thank you, Lord, for thinking about me. I'm alive and doing fine. Two. All right, out there, we're not playing any more music till you come in here. None of that bullshit. Don't you be cheating on me. I need an audience in here. We got it about three quarters full. I need some people. Come on, Joe. I see you out there. Come on, James. Where's Chris Single? Chris. Chris. Get away from the beer. Holler at him, Munch. Chris. Sign. Thank you. Come right in. Thank you. It's cooled right off in here. We're going to get the whiskey out. Hey, Chris. God dang. Go get him. See this man? That's Joe Brandon right there. This is relevant. When I first moved here, when Mississippi and I moved here, before she got pregnant. I was free and clear and it was all, her fault. all her fault. Happened in a Volkswagen bus. It always happens in a Volkswagen bus. 
It was just a casual encounter. Next thing you know, I had a job at a sawmill. So the very first shoot, I used to be a photographer. I don't know if anybody, anybody know that? Know that? Well, I am. I, I'm a filmmaker now because, you know, I wanted to be a bigger asshole. But <laughs> that's sort of an inside-outside joke. You were in a movie once, weren't you? Yeah. Two of them. Really? Not the porn flick. But the other one was good. Thanks. Well, I. Start off with a woman getting a bullet stuck in her gut. Do you know him decapitation? That's a great movie to watch. I like that. Yeah, I love that. that Love that part. There's Chris. Just get him up here, just where he can stand in the door there. Joe Brandon. Joe Brandon. Joe bought Claude Ramsey's place, which was the first place I ever photographed here. And he was a guy that was a hermit. And just stay right there, Chris. Don't don't move. Don't move. You're staying right there. Don't fall back. Um, I photographed Claude's place, and Claude was a man that never ridden in a car and lived. They called him the hermit. He was like a hermit. And, uh, and... Four or five of those pieces ended up at the, in the American History Museum at the Smithsonian. And uh, Joe owns that place now. And I keep threatening to come back and see it, and I can't emotionally bring myself to, I can't mentally prepare myself. But the last time I was there with Claude, he was dying, and we knew it, and he knew it. And, but it's, it is what it is, but uh, it, it, it's a big part of our history. But the house is still standing. It was really something. I'm going to have an opening this fall, maybe. Are we having an opening this fall? Maybe. And we're going to show some existing work that we haven't shown for a long time. So if you'd like to purchase a photograph of Claude's house that we sold in 1976 for $35, you're welcome to come up and get one for $2,500 in the same gallery. Now's when you want one. Yeah, they didn't want it then. But uh, that's Chris Single right there. He's, he's probably about half drunk. Raise your hand, Chris. Raise your hand. We need to get the cameras rolling. Are you rolling, Luton? Yeah. Am I rolling? Are you rolling? Am I rolling over here? I don't know. I don't know if it matters. Does it matter? Hey, Grayson. Shit. <laughs> Chris Single, my man, right here. We've been trying to get him down here for years. Desert Storm Tank Commander. He uh, served his country with a vengeance. And I don't think he's properly treated right now, but that's just my opinion. Um, lives on the mountain, Cravenstown. There's some fine people, some not so fine people that stole all your shit. And uh, he's living simply in a Amish-built storage shed. And are you getting the wood put in this winter? Are, is the wood stove in? Is that the deal that's happening? I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to bring you a 1,000-watt generator to replace that monster you had. And that'll run your DVD player. You can run, you can watch your bad movies. Don't start. The Swedes aren't here. The Swedes aren't here. He watches um, He watches Gone with the Wind, and that's porno to him. But Chris, Chris was, the, was the motivator for us to start serving veterans once a year and having a, an event that, that lent themselves to them. Once you've gone to Desert Storm and commanded your tank and and been put through the hell that he was put through, and he's too good a man to stand up and, and not let it bother him. When you get home, you should be properly cared for and properly attended to, and I don't feel like he is. And uh, Chris needs a heart transplant, so if anybody feels like donating, we're looking for somebody of a specific blood type. 
So we're going to see to it that he's not cold this winter and that his DVD player works. So there. Avery, are you going to say anything? Because I'm about done. Avery, my daughter, just wanted everybody to know. Here she comes. My oldest child. Are any of the other kids here? This is my favorite child. <laughs> just feed me my lines. Feed me my lines. This mic's too tall for you. Okay. When it Tuesday in Cookville, October 1st, this Tuesday, Berlin Thompson, Sean Kemp. That's right. At the Salt Box. Um, it's a dinner and a show. No dinner and a show. <laughs> but it'll be a hell of a night of music. Nothing to eat. <laughs> Smoke a big one on the way, get the munchies, and then screw you. <laughs> but it's for WCTE, which is local PBS, which is so very important to the people I care about. It's the only avenue for early childhood education over the air and free to the mountain children being raised by their grandparents on the mountain, one of whom is right here right now. And uh, if without public support, and this is a great event, and, if, and we've got some of these to hand out, without public support, local PBS stations like WCTE that gave my illustrious career a start uh, will disappear. Uh, the big ones might last, but the small ones will surely not last. <coughs> and then she's going to come on board here and run this outfit and she ain't going to be as easy as Mississippi, so y'all don't want that. So October 1st, next Tuesday, Cookville, Tennessee at the Salt Box. It's all you can drink, right? Is it? <laughs> Snack food. And it, there it is, wcte.org and... I was going to go speak and give everybody a cookie. <laughs> Who would go if I, if I come and only you, James? That's it? That's it? Nobody out? Grayson will go. Logan will go. They're good cookies. Good cookie. We'll give you a ride home. <laughs> cookie and a ride. How about that? Yeah, cookie and a ride. Who's your mama? You can take notes. All right, that's enough of me. Is there anything else? Oh, yeah, Jig Head Beer. I want to say it again. Jig Head Beer, man. Cookville, Tennessee. They're good. I like them. I like them. And uh, I like their beers. I like their Rio. I like that, that light kind of summery beer we were drinking. Remember that? That's the pre-whiskey beer. Grayson and I have a history. We have a little, we had a problem with Benshine a few years ago. Yeah. Great interview. It was a really good interview after the show. He'd, he'd be good like this. Yeah. Ha, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then we go. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, I, and the people at home were, I understand. I get where he's coming from. That was the night you ended up sleeping on your tent. <laughs> He went to set up his tent, and it was beyond him. I found him behind the stage in the morning about 9 o'clock, and he was sleeping on top of his tent. We're going to let him sleep indoors tonight because, you know, it's you. <laughs> well, you don't do what the damn Husta Romeos did because they're banned from the apartment. Oh, Lord God, that was awful. We won't talk about that. Projectile vomiting from the bed. Oh. Uh, Drank Mississippi's thing, uh, uh, champagne bottle. That we do. You can do anything you want. Don't touch the champagne. All right. All right, all right, all right. On a serious note, I'm going to let him play. Grayson was here. Some of you go back far enough. Yeah. The night that Tommy got killed, we had the greatest portalit guy. And that sounds funny, but he was, it's not... Greatest human being, greatest guy, greatest businessman. I never had a portly guy where everybody leaving would stop and hug him on the way out. He was just a fabulous human being. 
and, it, and I mean, they were spotless. They pumped them three, four times a day. And he sat out here by the big row with his little buddy, and they cleaned constantly all day long. And, and you know, I don't care what you do. That kind of dedication and quality is, it shows a quality human being. And he went out this way, and it's a dangerous way, and we begged him to go the other way. And he, he being Tommy, he got too close to the edge to try to let somebody get by. And he rolled down the hill, and he was, he was killed. And I went down there and tried to see him. And uh, they wouldn't let me see him. And I was walking back, and I didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> I was ready to, you know, call it a night. And uh, Grayson was scheduled to play the recorded set that night. And uh, when I got back, he gave me a hug, and, and we hit it. And we played three hours, and I needed every three, a whole three hours with Buddy. And uh, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. And he came back the next year, and he said, I'm playing for free because we're going to change the mojo. And we went, we did. Not everybody does that. This is Grayson Katz. He's my friend. Give it up. Sun slithered down behind a sycamore tree. The wind rolled in to cool me by degrees. It's been too hot, Mama, you know it's been too warm. It'll be all right when the summer's gone. It ain't, it ain't ever leaving. The fish ain't been batting, but my hook is wet. I ain't seen no rain hang since the day I lay, yeah, yeah. Take a drink of water when your throat is dry. I'm gonna sit on the dam all through the night. Hear the bullfrogs croaking all around the pond. They sound just like a concert in Nouvelle Orleans. Streams through the forest just like the blood in my arm. I see you in everything I do. Love you now, just like I loved you then. I'm getting a little too old, baby, to try and pretend. Yeah, yeah. But there could be another to compare with you. Cause I see you in everything I do. As I pack my bags, I hit the I own a stretch of land and I got me a fishing hole. Ho, ho. Gonna sit right here till I clear my head. Cause I see you in everything I do. are no answers, it's just the road you're on, if you don't open up your eyes, 
soon it'll all be gone. Breeze through the forest just like the breath in my lungs. I see you in every pain. Thank you, thank you. So, what do you call the wife of a hippie? Mississippi. <laughs> they love that in Mississippi, by the way. <laughs> Mississippi. <laughs> She's going to hit you. Headed on down Highway 42 Looking for a girl Look a lot like you You ain't the one I've been looking for You done me wrong But you ain't no more Now hold on to your will Hold on to your might You'll find another man Gonna get you through the night Storm clouds are coming out of nowhere, it seems. The only damage I know came directly from me, from me, from me, from me, from me. So I'm headed on down Highway 42, thinking about myself to forget about you. The only thing I ever done wrong in my life was to blame a woman for my struggles and strife. I'm on the road all alone. No money in my pockets, no cellular phone. Where I'm headed, hell I can't say. Day turns to night and the night turns away from you. From you, from you, from you, from you, from you, from you, from you. Call me a fool. No one could ever be quite as selfish as you. But there I go, pointing fingers again. How dumb I was to think that I could ever be your man, your man, your man, your man, your man, your man. Let go of the future and let go of the past. Put gasoline on the present and have yourself a blast. Me, I got to reevaluate my mind. My wrong ways of thinking made me damn nearly go blind. They say the revolution it starts right now. But as within, baby, so without, without you, without you. Without you, without you, without you, without you, without you, without you.
Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think all this is about is what's on the front of that bus out there. It's called L-O-V-E, love. And uh, love is about as contagious, more contagious than anything, really. Hate's a pretty damn good contender, I tell you what. You can uh, try to combat hate with hate, and it just doesn't work. But I, in my younger days, when somebody used to uh, chime their brights on me and then pull up around me and then uh, slam their brakes on me or something, or I'd, I'd get mad and try to retaliate. But uh, And then, you know, the other day, I was driving in the fast lane, and I was stuck behind this car, and I was just you know, kind of equal distance from behind him, this, this guy, I could call him all kinds of names, but he goes in the slow lane and wants to bully his way up in there. I'm thinking, man, I'm trying the best I can. This dude right here is not doing anything. There's a truck over there blocking you. And what I did is I pulled back and I let him in. He felt probably better. I don't know. He had a problem anyway, but I was thinking I felt better than, than just stolidly sitting there holding them against the, the wall going, uh-uh, no, no. But, you know, what it is is it felt better to neutralize it and to back off and to yield. And I think it would help if a lot of people did that more often to, uh, to diffuse the situation because it, it, it's good to escape. And, uh, I don't know what that means, <laughs> but it's love, love, and, and one, of the, one of the cheapest things you can ever do for somebody is to hug them, just hold them, say, hold me, darling. Ooh, it feels so good to be held. Sweet things in my ear Give me only pretty little words to hear Tell me you love me all night long Tell me you love me even when I'm gone Hold me, darling, hold me tight You're the one I want to be with tonight Hold me, darling Everybody doing all right?
It's all about love. That's the whole thing. That's why I, I think Hippie has been trying to convey for all these years. You know, oh. for all these years. Wow. So, um, every time I come here, um, I th- you, well, most of the time I've, I've come with Chad and Corky, our road manager, and Corky phenomenal guitar player and he wishes he was here but we've been on the road for about two and a half months this summer and his wife's birthday is tomorrow and he begged me says please i'm gonna get killed you know he hadn't been home all summer and and yeah so anyway uh this is corky nope next time nope next time with the roosters condoning he says oh i miss corky So you, <laughs> he's out by the chickens. I heard him over there. He's like, there goes that. He's, he's playing guitar and doing that. <laughs> but uh, usually when I come, I have the, the confirmation of being with other people in the band that I'm going the right way. This time I'm by myself going, I think I remember that. No, I remember that. No, this, that. No, I remember that. And I'm going, mm, I don't too far. Oh, you know, because the, at that point it was a GPS track. And um, <coughs> and then I get out here and I get this crash text from my father and thinking, no signal. <laughs> what do you know? Sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking, I think I'll stay the night. No signal is a good plan. <laughs> but it reminds me of uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, scenario. I used to go uh, uh, to this little creek in, in Riverview in Alabama. And it was real shallow, and I called it Quicksand Creek. And there's a dirt road to get there. And um, I kind of came up with a song. I don't know. What, songs come up like dreams sometimes. And but you take what you want to out of this song. It goes like this. Just driving down this road, he reminded me of this song. Driving down that old dirt road past a chicken man who rusted out stove, wore out tires and bags of trash. Sorry, I got a, let me start that over with the thumb. Then I'll start over. I got hair in my mouth. Mm. You know, people who have long hair, it's the weirdest thing. Do you ever end up with hair in your underwear? Like, how the hell does that happen? <laughs> Should figure that out. Mm. Okay, here we go. <laughs> He's not yet. <laughs> Driving down that old dirt road past the chicken man, the rusted out stove. Wore out tires and bags of trash. I'm high on whiskey, I'm low on cash. Tell your ma, tell your pa, don't you worry, I don't call. I'm out in the woods past the cypress grove. When I'm coming back, baby, I, I don't know. I don't know. I got a bag of weed, a case of beer. A little George Dickel, some American spirits. Spend the night out in the woods. <laughs> Hope it might do me some good. Some good. A few quays house is burned and gone. The cows in the pasture have all gone home. Pond in the lowland has done run dry. Blue sky days have turned to night. You hurt me good, you hurt me hard. I never thought you'd go that far. But love's a lot like gasoline. It might burn messy, it might burn clean. Don't you worry, don't you cry. I ain't no verge of suicide. I'm like an old snake shedding his skin, crawling out to crawl back in this human race. Searching for my sacred place with a bag of case of beer, a little George Dickel, some American spirits, a bag of weed, a case of beer, a little George Dickel, some American spirits, spending the night out in the woods, hoping that do me some good, yeah, 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 do me some good, yeah, 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 God, 
grocery store who likes to sit around this house and paint let me think of things you gon' think you gon' think the young man Corey stole his car he trashed it to hell and I was back in the yard no remorse and there ain't no shame it stands as a statue to a young man's game a young man's game I ain't pointing no fingers I can identify with a selfish man and his ability to lie. Cold hard truths like a hammer in the teeth that hurts like hell and that don't give you no peace. No peace. So I'm out in the wild woods singing my song about a good man that's done gone wrong. Trying to rise above it all while the leaves and the trees are starting to fall. Making way for the cold, hard freeze. Ain't it funny how this life can bring you to your knees? Ain't it funny how this life can bring you to your knees? I got a bag of weed, a case of beer, a little George Dickelson, American Spirits. A bag of weed, a case of beer, a little George Dickelson. I sing my song with a simple refrain While the cold wind had turned to rain Red clay road had turned to mud Cold brown liquor, it warms my blood Icicles hanging on the old barbed wire It's too wet outside to build a fire Spending the night in my pickup truck With the stereo and the windows up Stereo low and the windows up Now, at this point in my life, I figured out a couple of ways to approach a problem. If things are not working out for me, the first thing I do is <clears throat> drink a lot of water, sleep, exercise, maybe juice fast for three days, drink kombucha, eat vegetables, do yoga, Gus mentioned that, run. Read the Dhammapada and the Tao Te Ching. Possibly meditate. Now, if that doesn't work, and you still feel pissed off about something or something's wrong, then I suggest you go the other way. Try to burn that. I ain't gonna cuss, but try to burn that stuff out. <clears throat> With a bag of weed, a case of beer, a little George Dickel, some American spirits. A bag of weed, a case of beer, a little George Dickel, some American spirits. A bag of weed, a case of beer, a little George Dickel, some American spirits. You might know the words by now if you want to sing along. Come on now, help me now. I got a bag of weed, a case of beer, a little George Dickel, some. Come on now. A bag of weed, a case of beer, a little some American spirits. A bag of weed, a case of beer, a little George Dickelson. Come on, one more time. A bag of weed, a case of beer, a little George Dickelson. Keep it going. Spend the night out in the woods, hope it might do me some good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do me some good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for singing on that. It's kind of like the Mormon Tabernacle Choir singing Bag of Weed, Case of Beer, and Little George Dickles, <laughs> American Spirits. It's about as priceless as being, being poisoned.
can't afford it, though. I know. It's, that's what this is all about. Is what, the donations will be coming to you now that you said that. Yeah. <laughs> Careful what you wish for. You probably only get about 10 of each. <laughs> it'll, it'll get you through the, the, the cold weather. down a rabbit hole a while back. There's this fellow named Joseph Campbell, and he's an archaeologist of mythology, and if you ever want to enter his world, the best way is probably his interview with Bill Moyers called The Power of Myth. And the uh, hero's journey is a, you know, once you get, you'll get hooked by the power of myth, and the hero's journey is a little bit dry to start off with. But the, the quick fix will be the power of myth, and then there's all kinds of uh, doors that will open. Uh, and uh, I started, uh, he mentioned a speech by Chief Seattle in the 1800s. I don't know whether it came from a movie or Chief Seattle himself, but the idea is still the same, is that the United States government had given the Native Americans up around uh, Washington land, and but they discovered diamonds on the land. And they said to Chief Seattle, they said, we want to buy your land back. Chief Seattle wrote this famous letter to the president at the time. Thank you. And uh, the letter basically was saying, how can you conceive of buying or selling your mother, your own mother? You know, the, 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 the air is like your breath and the rivers are like the veins in your arms and the trees are like the hair on your head. How can you conceive of buying and selling your own mother? And because he could not conceive of that, he lost the land. And uh, this is a song called Chief Seattle. There's too many things that I want in this world that don't mean a goddamn thing. I remember the way that you held me. I remember like a dream. But desire is the cause of unhappiness. Keep sitting on that thing. Keep sitting. my love, you've done me wrong. I could sing it to my grave. But my songs are like prayers and I'm so tired of tears. The white man took what he gave. I remember what Chief Seattle said. How can you buy the land? How can you purchase the air that we breathe and how do 
Take away his wife, you could take away his kids, make Job look like a happy man. Take away his hopes and reduce them to his needs, then you got him in your hand. Where is the love I was looking for? Where is my victory? Don't you know the man who goes to war? Comes home in defeat. Comes home in defeat. Don't you know the man who goes to war comes home in defeat? Comes home in defeat. Thank you, everybody. Change the subject here. I, uh, I grew up in a small town in Alabama, Bruton, Alabama. And uh, a minute, well, maybe I'll tell you. Well, all right. <laughs> Since you insist. So, Bruton, Alabama, a typical small town. Um, and uh, I, I had my, my granddaddy Caps. He was. Um, he was, worked with the Sewage and Water Board in, in East Bruton, which is actually, it's a whole different town. It's actually south of Bruton. It's called East Bruton. And there's a, it's a colorful downtown. There's some funny people there. It's a divided, East Bruton and Bruton is divided by Murder Creek. So you can be on the right side of Murder Creek or you can be on the wrong side of Murder Creek. <laughs> you take it for what you want. And uh, there's a fellow there who's one of the, uh, uh, the uh, Huntington Five, I just, uh, Bob Zellner, he was, uh, was friends with uh, uh, Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks, and he just put out, a, uh, he wrote a book called The Wrong Side of Murder Creek. He was actually raised in, in East Bruton. His daddy was a Methodist preacher, and he, uh, he was also a KKK member until he went over to Europe and became friends with a black gospel group, and he came back to Alabama, changed, and, and uh Bob Zellner grew up with that being his daddy, and he became, uh, well, anyway, I'm, I'm going down the, the whole rabbit hole. You can Google it if you want to. Uh, Spike Lee is making a movie called Son of the South that I just uh, uh, was talking to Bob about, and it's just been filmed. It'll come out. Um, uh, but and uh, I'm getting sidetracked with my story about Bruton. So my mama uh, had her, her family, and I think I'm kin to uh, to uh, Pruitt. What's his first name? No, there's another Pruitt out here. Ernie, yeah. So I was looking at him. I was like, man, he looks like my – because I've got – my mama's side was Pruitt. And so I was looking at him. I was like, damn, we're related. I know that. He said, well, some of them moved from South Alabama. I was like, what? Um, and I thought, well, hell, I know I'm kin to everybody – South of Montgomery, but now it's kind of going all the way up to Tennessee. And so, uh, um, and uh, Bruton, typical small town, you got all kinds of uh, <coughs> colorful stories. There's there's two families, the Millers and the Macmillans, pretty much own the whole. Uh, uh, they they own the town, and uh, the, the Millers have the 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 lumber mill and container corporation. The Macmillans own all the land all the way from Tallahassee to Montgomery. You can walk on their land and not get off of it. And um, so they're insane. These two families are completely insane, and all the other people want to be just like them. And, and it's uh, and, and in Bruton, there's a, a guy named Earl Miller. He just passed away recently, and um, he he told me the story. This, this is a typical story of, of Bruton. He uh, was growing up as a small kid in the 50s, and uh, his daddy was, was a lumber tycoon, and he was going to go to Brazil for some business. And about this time, he was about seven years old, 
and, and a rich kid, and, and his daddy said, son, I'm going to Brazil for some business. You want me to bring you back anything? He says, daddy, I want a spider monkey. He was like, well, goddamn, I'll bring you back a spider monkey. So he went to Brazil, and he comes back with a spider monkey to, to Bruton, Alabama in the, in the late 50s. The, uh, the uh, what, what's the, uh, the animal doctor, the uh, uh, veterinarian. Yeah, veterinarian town. There's only one of them in town. He said, whoa, 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 we don't know what to do with this monkey. He might have all kinds of diseases because he brought him back illegally in a box. And, and he said, we're going to have to quarantine this thing. And, and, and told Earl, he said, you can, you can visit the monkey before school and after school and on weekends, but he's going to stay with me until we figure out what diseases he's had and, and how to feed him. So Earl, every morning, and I, and I know this for a fact because I actually interviewed Earl. He came to a show uh, in Nashville one time. I'd heard this story my whole life, but Earl Miller showed up at the show with a, with a chauffeur with a cowboy hat on him and a limousine. He's like, and I said, Earl, will you, can I? And I was asking him, and he said, yeah, man. Um, he was about seven years old, and he said uh, he loved that little monkey. I forgot the name he had for it, but he said that uh, he, he uh, would go before school and after school on weekends, and it all went well for about, about three weeks, and then the monkey died. They don't know, they didn't know how to take care of the spider monkey, and Earl was really upset, and he had seen these pickled pig feet jars at the store, and he was saying to the veterinarian, can we, can we possibly put him in a jar and save him? And, and he said, well, yes, yeah, son, that's formaldehyde. We can put him in a big old jar. And so from the age of 7 to 12 years old, Earl Miller lived with a, a, a monkey in a jar in his room, a spider monkey. And now at about 12 years old, he uh, he's kind of getting – little testosterone coming in, little, little, little orneriness, little spoiled rich kid thing, hanging out with his friends one day. They're looking at this spider monkey that's been in his room for years, <clears throat> and they decide to take him out of the jar. And, and, and I talked to him about it. He said, well, what they did, they took him out of the jar, and they cut his little tail off with some loppers, and, and they shaved him. And I talked to Earl, and he's like, yeah, man, it wasn't a clean shave either. There's little, little nicks and stuff on it. And he said, uh, <clears throat> and then after that, they dyed him green. And so you got a shaved, tailless, green, dyed spider monkey, dead. You know, and, and, and then they made little mittens for it out of aluminum foil. And they made little booties for it out of aluminum foil. And they made a little hat for it. And what they did is they got some Chrysler hubcaps. And the <laughs> Chrysler hubcaps at that time were pretty ornate. And they... They kind of sandwiched them in between these Chrysler hubcaps, and they took them out by the broom sage field out by the football field of the high school stadium. And uh, <laughs> they went out there in the middle of the night, and it was a night where there was a new moon, so it was really dark, and it had been dry kind of like this, and they put them in the middle of the broom sage. Are y'all listening to this out there? Sorry about this. It's a pretty morbid story, but I've got it. I don't know why I'm even telling it, but it's, it's, it's a true story that I know about from my hometown of Bruton. And, it's kind of creepy, yeah. And so he, what they did, and they, there's him and these other boys, they took him out in the middle of the broom sage field, they poured gas on him, and they set him on fire, and the whole field went up. And this is the middle of the night, and the whole town was aware of what was going on. So you got the whole town comes, comes on the broom sage field, the fire department, the police department, everybody's there. And, and then when the fire dies down, it's, it's pitch black. And, and Earl and his friends are hiding out in the woods, and they're watching what's going on. And he said that they got people with flashlights coming in from all different angles trying to figure out what started this fire. And they're coming in, they hone in, they, and he said simultaneously, they all spotted this thing in the middle of the broom sage field, and they went, <laughs> they all took off, went the other way. <laughs> Next thing you know, you got gray cars that say Eglin Air Force Base on them. You got black cars that don't say nothing on it. The place was roped off. School is out for the rest of the week because aliens have hit Bruton, Alabama. Now, Sheriff Holt was the sheriff at the time, and he's walking around pacing back and forth because he knows Earl. He knows. And he sees all this going down. Next day, he knocks on Earl's door. Daddy answers and says, I don't want to talk to you. I need to talk to your son. Earl comes out and he says, Earl, I know what you did, boy, and we ain't going to tell anybody about it. <laughs> that's, that's a typical small town, man. And uh, 
There you go. Yes. Oh, see, and okay, I'll, I'll address that because being born in Alabama, you have no choice. You cannot sit on the fence and say, I'm neither one. My parents were, were students at Auburn. I was born in Opelika because there wasn't a hospital in Auburn in 1967. And so I'm a, definitely an Auburn fan. But to, to, but to top that off, coming from Alabama, having to be born and to decide whether I'm going to be Roll Tide or War Eagle has pissed me off my whole life because what I think it is is the digression of mankind. Because when you're born having to choose one side versus the other, then you always have a duality kind of a mentality. And then you always want to have white and black or hot and cold or, or Democrat, Republican or whatever, whatever. You know, it's like we're all on the same team is what I've, I've figured out as i gotten older. And so it brings you down to... to Football is just messes our psychology up right off the bat. I'm just telling you. And there's, if this kid wasn't here, there's a T-shirt I want to make called FF. And you can just figure out what it stands for because that is the demise of the Southern man. <laughs> now, I got to stop this and play a song. I'm going to play a song. But, oh, yeah, another reason I hate football is I went to Tulane because go Green Wave. I think they finally won a game this year. It, yeah, that, that made me not like football at all. But I, why? Okay, all right. Now I got to keep talking. So anyway, yeah. So so you can't you can't love football if you go to Tulane University. But you know, like I said, I was born in Auburn. So when it all boils back down to it, we get back to the first question. Yes, I'm an Auburn fan. But still, FF, you know. <laughs> um, now I, I'm stuck talking. I want to talk. Oh, okay. So, uh, so I'm. Okay, let's do that. That's the school. That's the uh, female of uh, the pottery school, famous pottery school. So, 1967. Were they good then at all? No. <laughs> there you go. Well, that was when it was it was cool because that was where the Sugar Bowl was, and they played on the on the Tulane campus, right? I mean, and, but when I went there, they didn't have a field, so they had to go to the Superdome, and it was just just all anticlimactic. Well, so they were good at one time. Go, go Green Wave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, see, it makes people all divided and stuff. It's just a horrible thing. So let me let me tell you a story. Of, since I got down the rabbit hole with Bruton, Alabama, there's a the first homeless man I ever came across was in Bruton. His name was Mansell Travis. And he wore a white carnation in his lapel no matter what condition he was in. I put together stories from friends and family um, about him. But nobody could tell me why he wore this carnation. He was a bad alcoholic. Nazarene Church had to buy him a trailer. And uh, this is a song I wrote about him. And it goes like this. Nobody could tell me why he wore the carnation, so I had to make that part up. White carnations was a favorite flowers. They didn't come from around here. They came from some far off land where the rivers run clean and clear. White carnations was a favorite flowers. They came from across the sea. Every time you see a white carnation, please remember me. I 
much about the man. I remember seeing him in town. He ate up scraps, weren't fit for a dog, and his skin was nasty brown. I heard he was selling flowers he stole from a fresh dug grave. If it wasn't that, then it was white carnations the florist was throwing away. And yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd often see him at the ABC sitting outside the door. Anytime anybody walked by, he'd holler, change for the poor. Folks say he showed up in town on a truck full of collard greens. Right in front of the Robins and McGowans and the seersucker suit was stained. He hollers, Nancy Travis. Nancy Travis is my name. And he got enough money to buy him a pint. He'd head down the burnt corn bridge. And that's where he'd spend his days and nights, weeks and months on end. I remember when the Nazarenes bought him a single wide. He'd sit on the steps and smoke and drink and wave when they rode by. Nobody knows where he lived before, maybe Elba or Luverne. He says he was a man with a broken heart. His speech was taciturn. He hollers, Nancy Travis. Nancy Travis was his name. Oh, yeah. Where to come from, boy? you come from, boy? Where'd you come from, boy? White carnations was a favorite flowers. They didn't come from around here. They came from some far off land where the rivers run clean and clear. White carnations was a favorite flowers. They came from across the sea. Every time you see a white carnation, please remember me. Some say he killed his wife, and some say she drowned. Some say it was suicide, some say she just left town. Some say it was another man, some say she was just a girl. But nobody knows what it really was to happen to shatter Mansell's world. Shatter Mansell's world. Shatter. Mansell's world. Where'd you come from, boy? Now the high school girls would ride by his house and they'd yell and they'd shout and they'd say, Hey, Mansell, show us what you got. And he let his old they laugh and joke about the way he looked like a man from a fresh dug grave. But in his lapel, he wore a white carnation and he wore one every day. In his lapel, he wore a white carnation and he wore one every day. In his lapel, he wore a white carnation and he wore one every day. In his lapel, he wore a white carnation and he wore one every day. seeing signs on 41 saying Jesus is coming soon. I watched those signs rot into the ground that don't look like they ever came back. 
I'm handsome or me or you. Where'd you come from, boy? Where'd you come from, boy? Where'd you come from, boy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, thanks so much. A little segue toward the end of that song. coming soon on the highway when I was a child I remember my granddaddy Woodrow in a Chevrolet Impala riding down County Road 41 near a town they called Pollard when I was a child my mind was running wild was a child, I waited for a while. There's a brown skinned boy, he jumped in Murder Creek. Fort Crawford and East Bruton. He landed in a nest of moccasins. He drowned trying to swim through them. The story goes his body flowed down and down. He got hung up in some old cypress knees round near Pollard. Down. Now how could God and Jesus let that poor boy drown? All snake bitten, bloated, floating round Pollard Town. Jesus is coming soon. He's coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. He's coming. When I was a child, my mind was running wild. When I was a child, I waited for a while. Sunday school and having to listen to the sermon. And my granddaddy, he gave me juicy fruit and a pen so I could draw on the program. The only thing I was really looking forward to was dinner on the ground, fried chicken and butter beans and old preacher walking around. I asked him, how could God and Jesus let that poor boy drown? All snake bitten, bloated, floating around Pollard Town. How could God and Jesus let that poor boy drown? All snake bitten, bloated, 
floating around Polly Town. When I was a child, my mind was running wild. When I was a child, I waited for a while. When I was a child, my mind was running wild. When I was a child, I waited for a while. Hey, thank you. Well, one thing is uh, uh, getting off that subject of uh, my uh, granddaddy, uh, the, the one that worked for the uh, Sewage and Water Board, well, uh, he had a brother named Ed Lee, and it was it was spelled uh, uh, L-E-I-G-A. It's old school spelling. And um, uh, I remember my uh, granddaddy, they called him Pot Caps because uh, he was so bad at poker that they made fun of him because he never won the pot. And, uh, he kept, and uh, um, the... He he had uh, had in his head all the all the um, schematics, I guess, where where all the pipes and all the all the pipes that have been laid in, in probably a thirty year period. And when he retired, for another fifteen years, they'd call him and say, "Where does this line go?" You know, because they didn't have any drawings or nothing. That was, he had it all in his head. But he had a brother named Ed Lee, who was famous in three cities: Bruton, East Bruton, and Riverview. So I started off with fame in my family early on. He was famous for having a fence around his house that he had made that was built out of whiskey bottles and quick creep cement. It went around the entire house and was laid sideways. They call it the poor man's stained glass. And the, the sun was shining through it at certain times of day. And it was about six feet high. It went around the whole property. And he claimed it was designed to keep the chickens in and his wife out. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, Here's a story about that. Uh, see, see, that's been out. Two, three, four. Now, old Uncle Ed Lee was bad to drink. Couldn't hold a job, would just sit there and think. But he had two daughters. They was both valedictorian. They graduated in May. But they never come back home again. Now, Ed Lee and his wife, alone at the house, she held his whiskey above the sink. She poured it all out. Now, Ed Lee said, look here, woman. Now, my job here is done. I never packed up his books, was out on the run, built himself a shack on the Conecuh River. A pretty little place built out of fallen timber. Now his wife baked him a cake. She said, Daddy, please come home. He said, there's nothing here but us chickens, and we prefer to be alone. Ow. Woo. Ed Lee lived off them old Norwegian sardines and crackers, ordered classic literature from the magazines. He drank at least a bottle of whiskey, if not more, every day, till a pile of whiskey bottles began to grow in the shade. Then he bought himself a sack of that old quick creek cement, commenced to build himself a whiskey bottle fence of Evan Williams. Woo! Jim Bean, up down. Jack Daniels, up down. Oh, you know what I mean. You know that fancy stuff like wild turkey. You know about a ten high, heaven hill, rebel yell, southern comfort. 
And I got to the bottom one day of a bottle of old crow. And up, up to heavens, heaven, here we go, the Ed Lee died. Oh, sad, sad song. Woo! We got the blues real bad at Hippie Jacks right now. Oh. So anyway, he died just like we're all going to do. But somebody else lived out these days, who it is we do know. It's this woman named Miss Carol. And uh, she used to live in the house, but now she lives in a little RV because the house has fallen down because he's built a house out of remnants of other people's houses. And um, he had uh, also, when he... When he painted the house, he uh, also painted it with remnants of pieces of paint that he found, so it looked like the Partridge family bus. But it was painted. <laughs> so, anyway, um, since all the hurricanes have come through down in L.A. <laughs> hurricanes in L.A., yeah, lower Alabama. <laughs> so they've, uh, the fence is, is pretty much gone. There's remnants of the fence out in the woods right now. You find two or three bottles stuck together. It's like modern art. You can put it in your house. And if you find a little, 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 little tiny little whiskey bottle that's just shoved with some uh, cement, you can take that and use that as a paperweight. CD, I give directions at the end of the song on how to get there. And it's, but I'll tell you right now, if you go down to Bruton, Alabama, first of all, does anybody know where Alabama is? All right, in Alabama, there's a place called Montgomery right in the middle of it. And in between Montgomery and Mobile is a town off 65 called Bruton. And if you get to Bruton, you get in Bruton, you head south. On 41 toward Pensacola, Florida. Then you go over this thing called the Conecuh River Bridge. And then right over the Conecuh River Bridge is a little town that consists of two buildings. There's a crossroad town called Riverview. And right to the left is a dirt road. It goes catty corner to the left. You take that dirt road. And when it comes to a T, instead of taking a left to go to the boat launching for the Conecuh River, you, you take a right and you go three houses down on the left. They ask for Miss Carol. <laughs> Now she give you a piece of the fence. Well, now. Hey! Oh! Whoa! <laughs> True story about my great uncle Ed Lee. Thank you. So, yeah, so I grew up in Alabama, and uh, I'm, I moved, my, my daddy was a school teacher, but you know, the 60s hit Alabama in the 70s, and uh, he was a hippie school teacher, and he ended up getting, he ended up getting kicked out of, uh, of the, the school system in, in the 70s, because he'd have these parties, and he'd have Bobby Long and Fred Stokes and people, you know, ne'er-do-wells. Um, and and, and uh, he'd invite high school girls that he was teaching to the house, and they, they asked the parents' permission if they could drink, and inevitably it turned to pot smoking and then all kinds of stuff. He started a, a arcade there and, and just the superintendent of education. I started to write a song about it. I'll see if I can. Superintendent of education outside my window, 10 o'clock at night. He's got a little camera. Don't take some pictures, send them to Montgomery and get my daddy fired. It was, <laughs> it was hard to be an outcast in Bruton, Alabama. Even at the grocery store, folks don't treat you right. 
Look at William Faulkner in Oxford, Mississippi. They treated him like a dog when he was alive. Make me smile, make me smile, make me smile, make me smile, make me smile. I've been down so long, I gotta get up again. You won't do anything, baby, just make me smile. That song never got finished, but that's a, it's a good one, yeah. It's working, but basically that's what happened. My daddy got that fired for having these the crazy parties and moved me to Fairhope, Alabama. He started teaching the Mobile, and Fairhope is a lot different. Uh, so I moved there in about the seventh or eighth grade, and um, I got totally uprooted from from uh, kids. You know, I'd gone to kindergarten with. You know, it's just like my my friends and. So I get to Fairhope, it's all like yuppie and like little eyes odds and clicky. And then, and then uh, um, I always felt like an a outcast there, although I live there now. But it, 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 it worked out to where uh, I think about the 11th grade, I was a 4.0 student. I was the, the president of the Honor Society. I was president of Interclub Council. I was uh, in the uh, Key Club. Um, I... Uh, I did everything you're supposed to do to get into a good college, you know, and uh, played every damn sport and all that stuff, and, and it was the worst years of my life. I hated high school, and uh, the only only people respected me when I started dating this really hot chick who was two years older than me out, out of the school, and then, then, then all of a sudden people were like, what's that, what's going on, that dude? Finally, I got to leave, and I left, but I was all confused when I left Alabama, because, man, I was into Duran, Duran, Flock of Seagulls, and and, and this, this weird, you know, 80s stuff. And, and I had like a Duran Duran haircut. And I had, but I was still wearing button down ostrich cloth shirt with khaki pants and, and penny loafers. You know, I go to New Orleans like this. And then I see this woman down there on, on uh, Royal Street, St. Anne. She just moved from Portland, Oregon, I found out later. But my God, she, she was. She had a summer dress on with no drawers, and she had hair under her arms. I swear to God, I didn't know women could grow hair under their arms coming from Alabama at the age of 18, much less their legs. She had tattoos, had a Johnny Cash tattoo of him flipping the bird on her whole arm. And, and uh, man, I, I was looking at her, and she smelled like patchouli crossed with an old goat, and she was barefoot. And, and I was looking at her thinking, my God, that, what is wrong with me? Because I was thinking... I was thinking I might need a shot of whatever hippie Jack was bringing home. <laughs> wow, dude. look at that. You know it's good when it's in a plastic bottle. <laughs> Is this for me? Oh, oh that's good, that's good. <laughs> Whoo, good and cold. So anyway, I'm looking at this girl, and I'm all confused. I'm thinking, why, why, why am I feeling this way? Because what I was feeling is that she was the sexiest woman I'd ever seen in my life at this point. And uh, this is how I felt when I saw her. Oh, I saw you walking down the street today. Ooh, baby, looks so fine. The way you shake that thing, baby, gonna break my mind. Oh, I know you don't know who I am, and I know you don't even care. If that's the case, baby, please put on some underwear. Oh, God. Ah, this is a song just for you. This is a song just for you. This is a song just for you. Baby, baby, I think. This is a song that's for you. Woo! A song, pom, pom, pom. Si, pa, 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 ri, ba, yeah, 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 yeah. Si, pa, 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 ri, ba, yeah, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. You got your devil in your dragon's eye. You got a black girl in your ass. I like the way you drink your wine from a coffee glass. Oh, yeah. What you got, you got to give it to me because you can't take it with you when you go. I'm an old dog, baby. Please let me lay on your floor. I said, man, this is a song just for you, baby. Swear. This is a song just for you. 
This is a song just for you. This is a song just for you. They gave me a say. This is a song just for you. Once again, it's all about love. Now, trying to court her, I kind of approached her a little bit differently, a little softer, and I said, I wrote a song for you. This is a picture that day I saw her. And when I played it to her, she says, I hate that song. It makes me sound too cute. But I'd like to sing it to this day just to spite her. Standing on the corner of Royal Street on a Sunday afternoon, out there by the old A and B, barefoot in the sun in June, I saw her playing with the big mess man with Augie Jr. I saw her play with John Mooney, too, uptown at Madigan's Bar. A washboard, Lisa, wash away your sin. Let them go down the drain. Every time you move your dirty little Takes away our fears and our pain. I said hello to her out there on the streets but boys I looked into her eyes she said that she knew Tom Robbins oh I believed it was a lie I found out it was the truth later on <laughs> but how can New Orleans be so good to a lucky strike smoking with a rip in her dress and dirty toes, living life like a dream. A washboard, Lisa, wash away your sin. Let them go down the drain. Every time you move your dirty little takes away our fears and our pain. Lisa, 
wash away your sins let them go down the drain every time you move your dirty little hands takes away our fears and Oh, Washboard Lisa, thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, one thing I figured out is that, uh, well, hell, I haven't figured much out at all, really. One, one thing I did figure out is when somebody that says they figured something out, they probably didn't figure anything out. <laughs> I think that's all of our world, if you get down to it. I started thinking about, uh, uh, one morning I was uh, taking my son to school, or drinking some coffee, and I was reading uh, Khalil Gibran's The Prophet, and I was listening to NPR, and I smoked a little weed, and then uh I was thinking about things. I was thinking, man, when people define themselves, like if you go up to somebody and say, I'm a, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian, I'm a Jew, I'm a atheist, I'm a vegetarian. You know, we, if you say stuff like that right off the bat, then you got to know that you create animosity. You create uh, a separation. You're separating yourself from other people. And I started thinking about that, and I was thinking, man, we should mostly – come across as, as human beings, first of all. And right when I came to that revelation, I looked at my dog. I was like, I'm sorry. It's like <laughs> my cat's over there going, Wah. I'm like, all right, maybe we should all agree that we're all living beings, living beings on the planet at the same time, at the same time in space, sharing the time and space, and, and everything that's going on now, we are responsible for. It's not the people in the past. It's not the people in the future. We are all connected and together right now. So if you want to bitch about anything, do something. If you, if you, you know, and, and then I start, oh, it just gets into this thing. But there's, there's another revelation I had is action versus reaction. If you are acting, if you're writing a song, if you're painting a picture, if you're replacing your toilet, if you're doing anything like this, you're not concerned about what anybody else is doing. But if you're not doing anything, then you're reactionary. And you're sitting there going, oh, this sucks. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that guy's a butthole. Or this, you know, if you're not doing anything, you're reactionary. And then you suck because you're just looking at all the negative things in the world. But if you're actionary, you are contributing positive. So there's two ways of approaching this life. Which one do you want to do? So I think actionary is very good. And, and, and the reactionary people are destroying our country. And um, this is a, a song about, um, you know, saving the universe right here. <laughs> it's from old old boy from Alabama. You want to sing your song, son. You want to tell your dreams from boyhood to manhood and all points in between. The ditches of Alabama and the Norwegian fjords to the ones whom you love, the ones you do deplore. Hear my plea, hear my plea, hear my hopes for you and me. Let go of your notions of simple space and time. Don't get jailed by emotions. Empty out your mind. I know you're worried about money, but it's all gonna be okay. Just do what you love and love every day. Hear 
my plea. Hear my plea. Hear my hopes for you and me. Don't speak to me of God, and don't speak to me of war. If you can't speak of peace, don't speak to me no more. My eyes have seen the light, the light has made me dark, like a candle in a cave with no end and no start. Patriotism, pride, and greed will bring us to our knees. I'm as guilty as you. You as guilty as me, but hear my plea, hear my plea, hear my hopes for you and me. May we all join hands and lay down our arms and harmonize. May we love, may we love, 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 may we love. What's our common thread and what's our neutral ground? Whether you live in, in the country or you live in, in town, we're all here on this planet, third stone from the sun. I'll lay down my Bible if you lay down your gun and hear my plea, hear my plea, hear my hope. You and me, hear my plea, hear my plea, hear my hopes for you and me. May we all join hands and lay down our arms and hearts. May we all join hands and lay down our arms and harmonize, breathe as one. And may we love, may we love, love. Hey, thank you. So, spread that love junk wherever you go. Um, well, I don't want to overstay my welcome because I know people are going to be playing probably all night. Like, where is it? Okay. You keep playing as long as y'all want me. I like to sing an old, uh, one of my favorite songs. I grew up with uh, Bobby Long and Fred Stokes, my dad, and 
this guy named Tommy Jennings sitting around their house. Uh, they called themselves the Belleville Avenue Quartet, and they'd sing these old songs. And one of my favorite songs ever written, I don't know if it's a Scottish ballad or an Irish ballad or an English ballad, but it uh, goes like this. Scarlet Town, where I was born, there was a fair maid dwelling, made every youth cry well a day. Her name was Barbara Allen. It was in the merry month of May, green buds they were swelling, sweet William on his deathbed lay for the love of Barbara Allen. He sent his servant to her house, the place where she was dwelling. Says, you must come to my master's house if your name be Barbary Allen. A dying man will look at me. One kiss from you shall cure me. One kiss from me you'll never get while your poor heart is a-breaking. She walked back home through the fields. She heard some birds a singing. And as they sang, they seemed to say, Hard hearted Barbary Allen. Now, mother, go make my bed. Make it long and narrow. My true love died for me yesterday. I shall die for him tomorrow. She was buried in the church house yard, and he was buried there beside her. And from his grave grew roses red. From hers grew green briars. They grew and they grew so very high till they could grow no higher. At the top grew a true lover's knot Twined with green briars Thank you. That's one of my favorite songs ever written, old, old Barbary Allen. Whew, let's see here. All right, I'm going to do a song about a, uh, um, about a couple, and they have a conversation together, and uh, one of them named uh, Willie John, one named Perlene, and, and there's a hurricane on the, on the, in the Gulf of Mexico. And it's coming toward L.A. And Perlene's about nine months pregnant, and they're having this conversation. John, Willie John, do you believe it's time you head out in the woods and clear cut your path? Perlane, Perlane, do you believe it's true? We ain't got no money, the thing we gotta do.
Willie John, Willie John, do you believe it's time you call up the doctor and have this child up there? Perlene, Perlene, I'll be by your side, but ain't no doctor coming, I'm gonna take a little ride. We're gonna ride, wear and ride. We're gonna ride, wear and ride. On down by the river side. Winter sun, winter sun, shine, keep me warm. We got a boy child coming early in the morning. The muddy shores, muddy shores, between my toes. Ain't no telling where that muddy Mississippi River Dark eyes, dark eyes, what do you see? I see a newborn baby need that black willow tree. Perlene, Perlene, I heard you wail all the way down that pine needle trail. Willie John, Willie John, hear what you say. We gonna name that boy Waylon. Cause I was wailing all the way. What right now? That's said, Don't ride, wailing, ride. Don't ride, wailing, ride. On down by the river. Speaking of uh, naming a boy Waylon, I'd like to share with you a Waylon Jennings song that you've never heard of before. Yeah, because I, I'm almost positive you've never heard of it. There's a concept record I got hip to. Somebody left it in the van at a gig about 10 years ago. This uh, woman said, I want you to have this album, this vinyl, and, uh, 
And she said, you're going to love it. And it stayed in the van for about five years. And uh, finally, I pulled it out of the van. It was in the back house, and it stayed straight for some reason. And uh, it's a double album. And uh, it's a concept record called White Mansion. And uh, it's uh, built around the Civil War. And there's this English guy who came to Nashville, and he ended up um, courting uh, uh, Emmy Lou Harris, and they got married. And when he did this concept record, she fell in love with him because it's, it's absolutely brilliant. He took um, Confederate soldiers, and, and he, he wrote songs from the Confederacy point, and he wrote songs from the Union point. And Waylon Jennings was, was a uh, drifter. And he was, he was kind of a moderator between the two, trying to talk to both sides, saying, hey, you guys need to work this out. So his songs were, were based uh, from that perspective. And I'd like to share with you this song. It's a Waylon Jennings song off that record. It's called Old Dixie. And it seems strange how relevant it feels today. Oh, old Dixie, watch this black cloud roll, it's coming down to tear away your soul. How much longer can you pretend that your plow ain't threatened by their pen? Hold on, whoa, 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 Dixie, hold on. To stand alone and cut America in two means everything's lost. The Constitution's falling through to leave the Union is to weaken what is strong. You think it right, they think it morally wrong, and you'll fall. Whoa, 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 Dixie, you'll fall. King Cotton, your reign is shadowed by pain and burning emotions. You need slaves to keep alive. The North could help you survive this misguided notion. are proud and strong you could have had them be before too long you have a birthright and a lifestyle to defend you must hold on till the very end hold on whoa whoa If you check it out, it's called White Mansions. You can look, you can Google it and stuff. But man, that that's a beautiful, uh, especially hearing Waylon Jennings do it. It's a, it's a beautiful song. Um, I got uh, not much time. I've been playing my songs all, all night. I'd like to do. Uh, let's see, I'm still in the, in the south, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's odd. My my whole uh, perspective on life is is uh, can't quite pigeonhole it, you know. Um, Virgil Kane is my name. I worked in Danville train. Stonewall's cavalry came and tore up the tracks again. It's the winter of 65. We were hungry, barely alive. 
by May 10th, Richmond had fell. So that I remember oh so well. It's the night they drove old Dixie down. The bells were ringing the night they drove old Dixie down. And the people were singing, they went na 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 Back with my wife in Tennessee, and one day she said to me, Herbs, oh, quick, come see, there goes a Robert E. Lee. I don't mind chopping wood, I don't mind if the money's no good. You take what you can and you leave the rest, but you never should have taken the very best. The night they drove old Dixie down, the bells were ringing the night. Down. The people were singing, they went na 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 Like my father before me, I will work the land. Like my brother above me, who took the rebel stand. He's just 18, young and brave, but a Yankee laid him in his grave. I swear by the mud below my feet, you can't raise a cane back up when he's in defeat. The night they drove old Dixie down, the bells were ringing the night. People were singing, they went na 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 Thank y'all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, it is two in the morning. <laughs> we, for the last few years, and we're kind of loosely sort of thinking about trying to put out a uh, side, as they say, of gospel tunes. We've collected some good ones, and I always ask kindly if, if, if they want to, if they will, uh, finish this off with a gospel tune. And, yeah, because this is, it ain't a real church, and we're not real religious. And these pews came from a church of Christ, so what the hell? <laughs> right? Damn. Damn. <laughs> Give it up for Grayson one more time, man. Thank y'all. Well, let's see. This is kind of a gospel tune. They say there was a secret chord. David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift, the baffled king composing hallelujah. Hallelujah. If 
faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty in the moonlight overthrew you. She tied you to her kitchen chair, broke your throne and cut your hair. From your lips she drew the hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now, baby, I've been here before. I've seen this room and I walked this floor. You know, I used to live alone before I knew. I've seen your flag on the marble arch, and love is not a victory march. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. 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 was a time when you let me know what was really going on below, but now you don't show that to me, do you? I remember when I moved in you, the holy dog was moving too. Every breath we drew was hallelujah. God above, but all I ever learned from love was how to shoot somebody who outdrew you. And it's not a cry that you hear at night. It's not somebody who's seen the light. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> God bless them. If they're not going to turn on my heart, is I would never turn it on. Where's the campfire? You know, uh, yeah, there would be no fire tonight, baby. You're going to party in the dark. Shoo, there's a band. Oh, There's a van. Yeah, last year we went to Colorado. It was so sad. We had a little yeah. fire pit with the LED light yeah, right. with stacked sticks on top of it and kind of pretended that we were, yeah. Little known <laughs> fact, everything died in Colorado, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, Mississippi, were out there. There's hundreds of thousands of acres of trees that are dead. Oh, over the Trappers Lake. Oh, unbelievable. 
from Estes Park to, to the Continental Divide is dead. That I, you know, thank God for you guys, huh? I tell you, no, he's done. We're done. We're out of it. We're out of batteries. We're out of tape. We're gonna end it on the gospel note. He ain't going anywhere. We're gonna put him in his apartment. He'll he'll show back up outside. Yeah, go play him. We'll keep playing. Yeah, we'll go outside. You know, everybody asks me. Not everybody. I I made that up. <laughs> they say, how do you find these people? I said, I don't know. I looked up one day, and there he was. <laughs> He's coming back, Grayson Capps. Thanks for coming, man.